McWhorter Custom Rifles presents This week, we're gonna be traveling to Western Nebraska to hunt trophy mule deer with our McWhorter 45 XML muzzleloaders. With me is Dave Phillips and Dustin Watkins of WW Trailer. Come along with us as we put the McWhorter to the ultimate test. Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by McWhorter Custom Rifles, McMillan Fiberglass Stocks, Swarovski Optique, and Extreme Wildlife Adventures. Typically, when you think about hunting big trophy mule deer, you think about hunting somewhere in the Rocky Mountains. But about 15 years ago, I found a little slice of heaven out in the sand hills of western Nebraska. We're usually out here guiding in mid-November during the peak of the rut. But on this hunt, it's late December, we're hunting post-rut deer with our McWhorter muzzleloaders. It's the third morning of our Nebraska Sandhill mule deer hunt. Dustin and I have been hunting north of here quite a ways, and Larry said he's been seeing a bunch of deer up here, so this morning he loaded us up and brought us up here. He's coming in the road down here, and Dustin spotted a buck laying right up here in one of these cuts in these sand hills. Looked like a really good deer, so we're gonna ease right up to the top of this point and see if we can't get on him. We gotta wait on him to stand up. All right, Larry's getting up. You on him? Oh, he's hit good, he's hit real good. He's down right there. Down right over the top of that sand hill. Awesome. It's my first mule deer ever here in the sand hills of Nebraska. Couldn't be more excited. All right, we give him a few minutes, so we're gonna ease up the top of this ridge right here. Peek over this hill. We, we know he went down right there. We're gonna ease up here and make sure of it though. He's one right here. Yeah, baby. He's down right here. First ever mule deer. He's a good one, too. Man, he's better than I thought he was, Larry. Heck yeah. Ooh. Now this right here is exactly what we come for. Big old mature sand hills and Nebraska mule deer. These twos are 
long, got good forks in on this side, really good. Front forks are a little weak on that side, but this side's strong. He's got brows, man. For a first meal deer, I couldn't be more excited. Big old mature deer. Just, just what I wanted. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And this McCorder did the job. He didn't go 10 yards piled up here. Man, I couldn't be more excited. This segment of Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by Borden Accuracy, makers of the most accurate custom hunting actions on the market, manufactured in the USA to true bench rest tolerances. Borden Accuracy equals success. With Dave tagging out on a great buck, making a perfect shot at 150 yards with the McWhorter 45 XML, now it's Dustin's turn to get behind the gun and see what we can turn up. Uh, day three of our evening hunt. Um, Dave killed a nice one this morning. So we've just been kind of driving around all day looking and scouting and kind of just looking off through all the hills and finally we come up on some deer bedded uh, over this sand hill in this bottom, and we're gonna try to sneak around here and uh, see if we can't uh, get some position and get a shot on him. He's at 265. It dropped him. Yeah. <laughs> <Heck yeah. laughs> First Nebraska muley. Oh man, couldn't be more pumped. Three days of hunting, hard hunting. We've been riding around and scouting almost all day other than lunch. Here an hour and a half before dark, it pays off. About a 280 yard shot with the old McWhorter. We'll have to invest in one of these. 
first Nebraska mule deer. I couldn't be happier. Long three days of hunting. We've been hunting almost all day, every day, and you know, got to go home tomorrow. The fun's going in tomorrow, so this dude gave us a chance. We thought we'd take him and fill our tag and uh, go home a day early. Wife and kids want to see me. Been gone for quite a while, so with this in Kansas, thanks for Larry to let me hunt and come out and spend time with them. Precision Hunting TV is also brought to you by Huff Power Auto and Outdoor Stores, Borden Accuracy, Ultimate Antler Deer Feet, Mesquite Creek Taxidermy, and Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue. Welcome back, folks. Today we're going to talk about choosing the right scope. You know, there's a lot of factors in choosing the right scope. You know, what you're going to hunt, how you're going to hunt it, how far you want to shoot. So, you know, these scopes we got out here today, they're four of the most popular scopes that we sell. We sell all kinds of scopes. Roski is our scope of choice. Um, starting at the bottom, you got a one inch tube scope, real lightweight, 16 ounce, 3 to 18 by 44. Moving on to a 30 millimeter scope. This one's a Z6, 3 to 18 by 50. This scope weighs 21 ounces. It's got more capability as far as getting out to a further yardage on the same ballistic profile. This is a Z8i, their flagship scope, 2.3 to 18 by 56. Also comes in a 3.5 to 28 by 50. This scope weighs 25 and a half ounces, but it's there again, it's got more, more travel, so it's gonna be able to take you out to make further shots. And then their long range scope. This one is a 32 ounce scope, but this scope uh, is, their, is their long range scope. It's gonna have the most travel. It also comes in a uh, three to 18 by 50. This is a five to 25 by 56. So that being said, how you gonna hunt, how light you want your total setup to be and how far you wanna shoot, those are all things to consider in, in a scope. So Keith, tell us the, the mechanics uh, behind these scopes and why this scope won't go shoot out as far as this scope will on the same way. Absolutely, so like whenever you're looking at the scopes and you're trying to choose it for your applications, we kind of help you out along the lines of which one is going to meet that criteria based on two factors, zoom, right. the amount of magnification you have and how large the tube diameter is for the, for the, the, uh, for the scope. So what you're going to be looking at with a one inch tube and with a three by 18, you're talking about a smaller erector tube but inside that erector tube, it only has so much travel from top to bottom. In that one. <clears throat> and then the uh, other factor is, is that you're going to eat up about a third of that just getting the rifle zeroed. Now when you step to a 30 millimeter tube and you stay in that same magnification realm, the erector tube doesn't change much, but right. you have more room, more, inside that, more room inside of that tube to adjust. Right. Now you take a, a rifle scope that has 110 MOA, I'm going to eat up you know, one third of that on most cases, you know, depending on uh, conditions and everything. Right and where you're at, you're going to eat up about one third by, you know, like kind of what I use as a rule of thumb for it. But, so therefore now I'm only going to have probably about anywhere from 54 to 60 minutes left over by the time I'm done. Right. So I'm going to select a scope that's going to give me the most travel. But whenever you step from a three by 18, you go up to that five, to a five by 25, the magnification is more. So therefore your glass is larger, your erector tube's larger. So now you've taken away the, that amount of room to move in a, in, a, in a 30 millimeter tube. So 30 millimeter tube to 30 millimeter tube, why will this Z8 go out to further distance than this? It's because of? Well, it's because of the thread pitch on the erector tube itself right. that's used for the adjustment. So it can be a fine or a coarse. Coarse is gonna adjust you know, a little bit more per, per turn and, and, uh, than the other one, which is gonna have a finer pitch, which is gonna take more for it to adjust. If we're looking at apples to apples, we got a 6.5 PRC with a 140 grain burger going uh, 3,200 feet a second to give you an idea. This scope, at sea level gets you out to about 750 yards. This, this scope right here might get you out to 925. This one gets you out 1100. This one gets you out to 400. Yeah, and the other thing is too, is like, and we'll talk about this in another segment, is there's also ways to regain some of that egged up. That's right. Adjustment. Yeah, with, with uh, rings that have elevation built into them. We'll go into that on the next section. So today we hope we've helped you out making a good decision on your scope choice. That's your downrange segment brought to you by Keith and Allen and McWhorter Custom Rifles. Precision Hunting TV is also brought to you by Tacticam, Sig Sauer, Trigger Tech, Brux Barrels, Capstone Precision Group, and Hawkins Precision.
Well, we've got a big snowstorm rolling in and I decided to go over to a different ranch. It's not far, just down the valley. Um, there's a big cut cornfield on it. With 45X of mail in hand, I go find a big old cottonwood tree to back up against and watch the field. And uh, let's see how the evening unfolds. Here in Nebraska, and uh, it's got that gum cold. It, uh, well, it's just stayed cold all day. It was 13 this morning, it's about 30 now. Snow's moving in, supposed to come in this evening. Um, we looked over the whole ranch this morning, glassing, looking real hard, and the only group of deer we found on the whole ranch was right here. And um, what it is, there's a shelter belt right here of trees, you know, 100 year old, and n there's hardly any other trees around up in here. Well, these deer are using these trees for cover. They just happen to be right on the back of this. Um, this feed yard. There was a really, really nice big mule deer buck in here this morning. We just happened to be driving in this morning right at daylight and the son of a gun was right beside the road. I mean, he went out into the cornfield, which I thought we were gonna get him. And, um, but he just, he didn't go very, very far out in the cornfield. Then he come back, jumped the fence and went right back into this thicket. So we know he's in there. It's just a small thicket. Um, unless he goes out the other way, through several thousand head of cows. I think he's gonna come back here on this cornfield this evening, so we'll see what happens. Geese flying over, cool time to be in Nebraska. The deer starting to come out here now. Got a group of eight does that just come into the field. Um, they're down there about 400 yards, so I want to just sit and see what happens. Hopefully, that buck will come out with them. It started snowing pretty hard, and I've got to had to take my coat and put it over the top of the camera, so. I won't be getting a whole heap of footage here. So anyway, I'm gonna see what happens. Hopefully he'll show here in the next 30 minutes or so. Oh, oh there he is. There. He's gonna be right at 400. Here we go. <laughs> All right, baby. We just killed a stud in Nebraska on the ground. Yeah, baby. 400 yards with the 45 XML and smoked him, baby. God, that's awesome. I hope everything was good. I was struggling with snow blowing on the camera, trying to get it, keep it covered up, getting it out of my scope, getting a range on him. But we got it. We done it. He is down, baby. Yeah. Here we are in western Nebraska, and we got a giant. Big Nebraska corn husker buck out here in a cornfield. That wouldn't you know it. Hustled out here this morning. It was 13 degrees. Drove into the ranch and uh, found this guy immediately. Got in here this evening, set up at the base of a big old cottonwood tree, and uh, deer start piling out about 30, 45 minutes before dark. Last guy out there, there was eight or nine does out there. And this guy come out right at the very last and uh, he monkeyed around out here. It was hard to get a range 
in that snow. I kept hitting like 35 yards, which I knew that wasn't right. So, uh, but anyway, finally got a good range on him. He's 400 yards on the nose, dialed it up on the Swarovski, and the 45 XML done the rest. Just absolutely hammered him. There's nothing like them. They're the most accurate and deadly muzzleloader on the planet, 100%. And I'm going back to Oklahoma with a giant Nebraska muley.